Hey there, Nick Judithakis here. In this video, we're gonna go over how to use shell check to check if your shell scripts are POSIX compliant, even if you happen to be using Bash as your shebang. And I do have a little demo script here to check out. So let's take a look at that one. And in this case, it is going to output, output my name twice here. So the first one is POSIX compliant, whereas the second one is not. And the difference here is we are using double brackets, which are a feature of Bash, not just POSIX compliant shell, but they both do basically the same thing. And in this video, we're gonna go over how we can run shell check here against this script, but actually have it warn us if things are not POSIX compliant. And spoiler alert, TLDR, very, very easy here. All we have to do is add in a custom shell flag, say the shell that we wanna use here, and now shell check is going to do all of its static analysis using this shell's rules instead of the one that you have defined here in the shebang. So in this case, we can see like double brackets aren't defined in POSIX compliant shell. And we can verify if that's the case here by changing our shebang to be shell. Then we can rerun the demo script here. And now it says, look at that, you know, double brackets not found on line nine, that's over here. Uh, that's because it isn't defined here uh, in POSIX compliant shell. So super short video. I found this to be really useful because I was working with a teammate and he was developing some shell scripts and I kind of try to follow the philosophy of, I try to make all of my scripts POSIX compliant. So in this case, I'll actually prefer the top version instead of the bottom one, but whatever. I'm also pragmatic about this as well, where if there is a feature of Bash that's really useful and makes the script more maintainable, then I'll just reach and use Bash here, no problem. I'm not gonna really think twice about that one. Probably in this case, I actually would prefer the first one because I don't really find this version to be much less readable than the bottom one. Actually, with the syntax highlighting set up with Groovebox here, I actually find the first one to be a little bit more readable. This just blends in like a string, whereas this one gets uh, properly parsed. But again, that's like, you know, very specific to whatever syntax highlighting that you have set up. But yeah, maybe I'll do a future video about cases where I would use the double brackets here because Bash does offer a couple of few really nice uh, operators that you can do like regular expression comparisons and string comparisons. But yeah, for this video, that's about it. Uh, I actually found this to be a very useful thing because it is now something you can maybe just run on demand to check if things are good to go. Also, if you're looking for the shorthand version of this flag, it's just dash s, a little bit easier to type on the command line. I've actually done videos in the past before about you know when you should might want to use the shorthand syntax versus longhand. TLDR is, if I'm just like ad hoc writing on the command line, probably going to use the short flag, but if it's in a script, then I'll use the long one. Uh, I'll leave a card up to that video if, if you wanted to learn more about that. But yep, that's that. That's the, that. Whoop, whoop. Uh oh, I'm broken. That's that. That's it for this one. Leave a comment below if you have any questions. I'll do my best to answer all of them. Thanks a lot for watching. And if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up because it really does help a lot. I will see you in the next video.